Hello everyone, this is Pras and welcome to the FPL Wire. This is my Game Week 3 selection, team selection video. And um, we'll start as usual with my last game week. And I'm very happy to talk about my last game week because I had a pretty good one. Um, I didn't triple Captain Haaland, which was the one small regret. But otherwise, um, pretty much, you know, the midfield was stellar. Gordon got 10 points, Salah got 10 points, Jota with 6 and I thought Jota could have done better more. Smith Rowe with 10 points. So basically a goal with three bonus for three of the midfielders. João Pedro getting that winner in the final minute. Um, Haaland hat-trick. Isak was the only disappointment up top. And I'll talk about him in my team selection when I get to him. And then in defense as well, Trent happy with him with the clean sheet. I thought he could have done more. Robinson with that uh, beautiful assist plus two bonus. And again, two more disappointments, uh, Hall and Henderson. So when I'll talk about my dilemmas, they revolve around Newcastle quite heavily. Uh, even though Gordon got the goal, I wasn't very happy with his performance. And tonight I'm recording after the Carabao Cup. Um, even though they've qualified against Forest, I wasn't happy with what I saw. Uh, but enough on my team, uh, rank and all irrelevant. All, all I'll say to people is if you haven't had the best start, there's like 10, 15 points in it. So don't even look at your rank. Um, just look at your players, who are, the, who are the problem players, who are the players that you want, and that's all that matters this early on. It really doesn't matter how many points, 10, 20 points is actually very, very little, and, it's, and it makes like a 2 million difference in rank, so don't look at your rank. Um, so, that was it. I wanted to actually start today with, um, with uh, the transfer window, um, because uh, the transfer window closes on Friday, and for all the preseason work that we do, right? I mean, this transfer window in game week three is so crucial. Like the real gems emerge, like, you know, the Palmers of last year emerge from this late transfer window activity. Team shape changes, sometimes players change, some, some players become nailed, some don't. So I thought, you know, when I was going through all of Fabrizio and Orni's treats, uh, tweets today, I thought, let me just compile some of the names that stood out to me and just have a quick two-minute chat on, on some of them. So so Palace have confirmed in Ketia and a centre-back called Lecrio. Lecrio, I think that's right. Um, so in Ketia, I'm expecting him to, you know, this weekend we saw Edward and, um, uh, Edward and Mateta start. I think they go to this top two forwards and then Eze just playing behind them kind of setup. What this means is if that is the setup, then that's not so great for the for the wing backs and a lot of um, you know a lot of people did notice that you know Munoz was not getting as forward yeah, Mitchell was but he's always a crosser anyway so they they will hold width a lot more if you don't have an SA and Olise they were doing that e to some extent anyway because Olise is an attacking player but I think if it's two forwards then the onus of width comes down to the two wing backs so something to watch and that that for me is a knock on effect of if Nketiah does start regularly alongside Mateta. Of course, eventually it could be just one of the two. Uh, and then uh, the Lacrio signing is also good that they are replacing Anderson. But if they lose Gehi, they probably need another signing. So we'll see where that uh, where that develops. So that's a little bit on Palace. Uh, on Liverpool, Chiesa. I shared a tweet from um, uh, from Distant Covered. Um, uh, you know, he had some views on um, where he Chiesa will play. His, some of his best seasons were when he played right forward. He has also played left. He's also played centrally. Feels like he's coming in as, initially at least, as a backup to all positions. Most especially Salah. Um, and so will we see Salah's 75th minute uh, sub-offs? Maybe. Even at the, even at the weekend, sub Salah was subbed off, right? I think around the 81st minute. So it's possible. Whether he starts into Salah, I don't see it, at least not in the near term. We'll see how that develops. But I think at the moment, um, it's a good signing for Liverpool. No FPL implications that I see at the moment, at least not short term. Chelsea. So as usual, Chelsea could spring a surprise. I see Osiman is in the news. He could go to Saudi Arabia, but he's still holding out for Chelsea. I see Tony could go to Saudi Arabia or he's holding out for Chelsea. I mean, sorry to say, but that's what Chelsea has become like, you know, the other the other place where you can get like a nine year, eight year contract with a lot of money or or Saudi Arabia. These are the options Tony and Osiman have. If they sign any one of them, 
I would genuinely worry about penalties. Now, I know Chelsea fans think it's Palmer's to keep, but these are elite strikers. In Tony's case, one of the best in the world on, at penalties. And in Osiman's case, a very, very good striker who will want to compete for the golden boot. He's not just coming in, um, you know, for Premier League experience. So I, it would put genuine doubt, both in terms of penalties, but also goal share. At the moment, we see a lot of it as... You know, you saw this when Haaland joined uh, Man City, where suddenly, when you look at the XG, all of it is hogged by one player. Now, may- maybe the impact is not that high, but it's something to watch. It would make me a little bit more warier about Palmer. Anyway, I'm still skeptical whether Palmer plays number 10 every single game or some games he plays on the right. TBD. But I would be a little bit more skeptical. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm, you know, I could be very wrong on Palmer, and uh, I'm happy to be corrected. Chelsea's just an unknown at the moment. It would be an even bigger unknown for me if one of these two sign. Man United, Ugarte. I'll go quickly for the rest. Ugarte. I don't think that's a major impact or an FPL implication. I think the biggest imp- FPL implication is that Bruno will be a lot freer because this guy will do the dirty work. Him and Menu will do the dirty work, and I think we'll see that setup where we have. Uh, Bruno starting in front of them, and then you have a Xerxes or, or Hoyland when he's fit starting. So that will be the, the steady state setup. So I'd expect that. Um, I think with Arsenal, they've signed Merino. We, we were expecting this. So now we have a number six who will play alongside Rice quite consistently. Anyway, they've started the season similarly where Partey has started, but Merino looks like a massive upgrade on Partey. So that should help Odegaard, I think, specifically. Uh, because Odegaard will have to do less tracking back. I mean, he will be an he's an all over the pitch kind of player anyway. So not too much of an impact, but sometimes it does make an impact. On the 85th minute, Odegaard doesn't need to fall back as much if they're ahead. Maybe that counter if he's playing 90 minutes. I think it'll have a net positive on Odegaard specifically. Um, everything else, I think Arsenal is already in elite defense, so he's not going to improve an elite defense even more. Um, I think Brighton, the one to talk about is Kadioglu. Uh, they've signed the Turkish left back slash right back. Um, great attacking pedigree and um, Estupinian is now also fit so something where we'll have to be a little bit wary and you know if the first game that he plays is Arsenal or if if he comes on we'll not know so before Ipswich at home we'll all be wary and I would you know personally I'm looking at a Brighton defender transfer in I may not I most likely won't go there but it's a tempting price 4.5 is a good good price for him so one to watch uh, Villa. Uh, so the reason I've, I've put this one is uh, Gertwida is one they've linked with, uh, and he's a he's a right back. So after the cash injury, a lot of people have lumped on the 4.0 million defender whose name I still can't pronounce, uh, the Nada Jokovic player, uh, and uh, he could be nailed. But if they sign this guy then it's a very, very short-term punt. You could be looking at another Barco situation or another Kwanzaa situation where you get one week and then that's it, game up. So I'd be I'd be looking out for that. Ipswich have signed Ogbene, so a quick one. I think he could compete with Johnson. So those those with Johnson who were looking to play him, watch out for that, where, he, where Ogbene plays. Southampton signing Ramsdale, good for Southampton, good for maybe the bottom half, where if he, if, if he improves them, then that, that is good. We'll see a nice relegation battle, but no F- FPL implications. Wolves signing Johnston, maybe FPL implications because Wolves' fixtures after game week 10, 12 are actually very nice. Johnston is, is only 4.4 and he probably is moving to get a starting slot. Sa hasn't been great. So 4.4 goalkeeper always worth monitoring. And then for Forrest, finally, Moreno. Today, uh, Moreno played uh, against Newcastle in the Carabao Cup. Looked great. Moreno, I think, is, is a good attacking option. Um, so for 4.5, very good. And also another striker. So they were first were linked with Nketiah. Uh, but now, uh, because he's going to Palace, they're look, linked with another striker called Marmouche. And um, he could compete today. Awinui played, I think, 90 minutes because he took a pen. So he must have played 90 minutes. Um, so anyway, you know, the the time for wood is up. There you go. Another wood joke on FPL wire. Uh, let's go to um, the fixtures. Um I I am again like last week looking at only w- leading up to game week six. Now, somebody say why am I so fixated on game week six wild card? It's because I have no Arsenal. The problem is I I went with this strategy. It's not a problem, but that's how I have gone. I have no Arsenal. When Arsenal are um, are playing, who are they playing? I'm going to jump to the next slide already. 
because Arsenal are playing home to Leicester and then home to Southampton, two promoted teams. There's absolutely zero chance that I don't have triple Arsenal. So that's the reason why I will have to wildcard. That's what, what I planned. But if you have a couple of Arsenal players already, you can maybe look at a lo- longer window. But for me, it's, it's game week six. So therefore, my window of looking at fixtures and the fixture ticker is getting shorter because what happens after game week six, I will deal with when I wildcard in game week six. So... Um, Ipswich go to the top. Um, last week, Fulham were at, at, at the top and we got some good returns out of Fulham players. Ipswich go to the top, but doesn't really appeal. I, I still don't have a read on Ipswich. After playing Man City and Liverpool, you just don't know what the team looks like. If you have a Johnson, if you have a, another defender, Leif Davis, for example, I think nice option. But one home game, two away games, I don't know who to pick from them. So then coming down, uh, Aston Villa go to second in the ticker. A lot of people are looking at Isak to Watkins. Rogers has been the most popular Nkunku replacement. Um, I'm happy with two. I've got two um, because sort of when I planned this window, I saw this and I wanted a Rogers. I wanted a Konza. So I'll have these two. I'm very tempted by Watkins and I'll talk about him when I come to my team selection. Uh, Southampton third, not too interested. Man United is one of the fixtures. Away to Brentford is not easy. It's a blue here, but it's not blue in reality. And then Fulham is still high. Um, Ipswich away, I still like for the attackers. After that, home to West Ham, home to Newcastle, we will see. I think West Ham are looking better. Today, West Ham won the Carabao Cup uh, game against Bournemouth, who are not an easy team. Newcastle still, you know, not great. So we'll see. Maybe these are good fixtures. I personally don't plan to play either Robinson or ESR in four and five as things stand right now. And I'll explain that, explain why. But they'll be first bench. So it'll be good to have a first bench if there's an injury so that I don't have to worry about it and I can carry that free transfer over to my wildcard. That's the reason why I want a good first, second bench in game big four and five. Chelsea, a lot of people are looking at Palmer, a lot of people are talking about Madueke. So we discussed this. I'm not too hot on a Madueke type pick. Chelsea actually play tomorrow um, or Thursday uh, to timestamp. I think this video will upload on Thursday morning. So later today, Chelsea will play. We'll see what their lineup is. But Maresca is a little bit of a wild card at the moment. So I wouldn't be surprised if Neto suddenly starts on the right. Uh, Palmer in the middle and then you have Nkunku starting on the left or a Jao Felix starting on the left. He already actually, one interesting thing he said today uh, was that uh, unless they sign a striker, so they were asked about the striker and he said, look, I'm very happy with Jackson as my nine. He did not hint at options like Felix at nine, Nkunku at nine or even Palmer at nine, which was actually encouraging for Jackson. So somebody who's looking at a very short window, let's say they're wildcarding game week four, Isak to Jackson, Crystal Palace at home, we're looking weak. So I was a little bit interested in that. But uh, when you're selling an Isak type player who's on pens, feels wrong to go for a Chelsea player who may not get 90 minutes. So anyway, that's that's about it. Uh, and then Liverpool's still very good. I think the Man United fixture, I think we said on the pod, we expect Liverpool to do well in. And then home to Forest, home to Bournemouth. A lot of you should be looking to get Liverpool players between now and game weeks four even. Um, so if, if you're not getting them now, which is fine to wait, you should look at them in the international break. Uh, nothing else really to talk about in the fixtures. I think at the bottom again, Spurs, Newcastle away, Arsenal home. I'm not keen to play Poro in any of them if I had it. But uh, when we look at uh, Rob T's graphic for next week, I'll tell you why. Even if Poro was, you had a choice between Poro and Robinson or Poro and Konza, the clean sheet odds don't look great. Uh, I think it, they're the lowest in fact, let me go there now. This is Rob T's graphic for this week. Um, and you see Spurs, 16% clean sheet odds. Compared to a Fulham, 27%. Compared to a Villa, 34%. More than double clean sheet odds. I just don't I just don't think you need to do it. For all the things I said about Newcastle, I think at home, they're still good for a goal. So unless you have no choice, I think in that case, Porro is fine. Uh, so coming back to fixtures, then you're, you're talking about um, Arsenal, Brentford, Tottenham at the bottom. I think Brentford is fine as an entry point if you wanted to, especially if you can bench him away to Man City. Ho- away to Spurs is fine, Mbumo. Uh, if you can bench uh, Bumo for, for game week four, then I think going for Bumo this week is fine as well. And Arsenal is also an okay entry point. I mean, it's better than next week when they're away to Spurs and then better than the week after when they're away to Man City. So enough about fixtures. Um, I also promised some of the wildcarders now 
to look at a little bit of a longer fixture uh, fixture horizon. So what could people who are wildcarding now or game week four think about? I think what you should think about is swerving Haaland, to be honest. Um, I see a lot of people, obviously he scored a hat-trick, he's great. But away to West Ham, home to Brentford, I'm not seeing the same high ceiling potential. Of course, he's Haaland. Because then he's playing home to Arsenal, away to Newcastle. I'm maybe seeing two, three goals in this four weeks. Maybe I could be horribly wrong. But what I'm saying is if you're going against Haaland, then you're also getting a Palmer above anybody else. So you, ha you get the four fixtures for Palmer. So if you're wildcarding now, I think Palmer over Haaland would be in. I think Salah would definitely be in. And I would even consider maybe keeping a Saka or having a Havertz because you get the Brighton fixture and then after for game week 6, 7, 8, you're not scrambling to get another Arsenal. So think about it. I just think a Salah, Saka, Palmer draft or maybe not even a Saka. You can get a Watkins. You can get um, maybe a Havertz. So something like that could work better. But I definitely think if you're, if you're trying to jam in Palmer... Salah and Haaland you're sacrificing a lot and you're hoping to get lucky with these enablers which may not may not be there in five weeks and when you're trying to make the shift from your Palmer to a uh, Saka from your Watkins to a Haaland yes you will have funds to do it to move things around but you may not have transfers to do it so just think about that a little bit uh, in terms of Spur uh, Newcastle I would avoid them if you're wildcarding now because now it's done like Spurs at home is good Away to Wolves could be good. Away to Fulham, not that great. Then home to Man City. Then again, you know, away to Everton could be all right. So it's a bit middling. So I think you can, if you wanted to avoid them, um, you can avoid Spurs to a large extent. Away to Newcastle, home to Arsenal, away to Man United in the next four. And so I would go heavier on Liverpool, on Aston Villa, have a little bit of Arsenal, uh, maybe avoid Man City in the short term. And... That would be my my structure, my, my, my main body. And then, like I talked about, look at this, where I talked about uh, the Brighton and um, Brentford rotation. So you see here Brighton, game week three, are away to Arsenal. Brentford are home to Southampton. Brighton then play Ipswich at home, Nottingham Forest at home, the two weeks that Brentford have Man City and Spurs. Then when Brighton have Chelsea away, Spurs and Newcastle, Brentford have West Ham, Wolves and Man United. So this is, I think game week 8 is the only week where you might have to play somebody, but playing an attacker away to Man United, not an issue. And then Brentford's fixtures are amazing again. So if you were doing that, I see a lot of people do, getting Mbumo now, makes sense. Have Mbumo and a Jao Pedro, beautiful. I think that would be a good rotation. I think having Bumo and Wissa and Jao Pedro maybe is a little bit too much, but those are just some thoughts on, on wildcard. Uh, now or in game week four. If I was wildcarding in game week six, again, I talked about the structure. Game week six wildcard will definitely have triple Man City or double Man City. It will have triple Arsenal because you want these fixtures. Even though these are bad, you can basically switch one or two. Let's say you start with a Solanke, then you uh, sorry, a Havertz, and you switch him out to a Spurs, uh, to a Solanke then. So you get the Ips switch at home and then you get back. So you could have a structure where you go Arsenal to, uh, to Spurs, just one. I'm not saying you sell all your Arsenal. Uh, you start with probably an Arsenal defender or two. You probably start with a Man City defender. So why I like game week six wildcard is you're getting Man City Arsenal for the long term. You're not going to worry. You just keep them. You're getting probably a Solanke. You still hold on to a you know some of your cheaper assets, which you've had more time to see. Is Rogers really legit? Is ESR really the best 5.45 or is it Semenyo? Things like that. So it's just time. Okay, I've gone on too long. This has almost become a uh, solo pod. Uh, coming to game week three, um, I think this really helps me not knee jerk. So why I want to talk about Rob T's graphic here, and if you haven't, if you don't know, um, and because there's new audience for different podcasts, follow Rob T FPL at Rob T FPL. The the Twitter handles at the bottom. He's got excellent market based stats, and why I love it is because it removes bias. It removes bias. Because we are saying, oh, look, Newcastle's, you know, they're not looking so great and Chelsea are looking great. Well, if you look at the, f the, the graphic, Spurs are actually, uh, sorry, um, Newcastle are expected to score 1.85 goals. Chelsea are only 2.15. So on there's not a lot of difference between what Chelsea are expected to do home to Crystal Palace versus what Newcastle are doing home to Spurs. Then you try to think, okay, if Newcastle are expected to score almost two goals, and I think Isak is involved in pretty much half of their goals. Mind you, even tonight, Isak looked 
not great, but he got an FPL assist for the Wilco, uh, Willick goal that they scored. So theoretically, he's got two assists in three games. So it's not too bad. So if you think they're scoring two goals and he's involved in about 40%, he's got a good chance of getting a return in this game. Then you look at Aston Villa. Aston Villa are 1.9 away to Leicester. So again, very similar to an Isak. So it's not like you know Newcastle are playing. Uh, you know, it's not like it's João Pedro, who's got away to Arsenal and an expected goals of 0.88, in which João Pedro will be like a goal share of 30 or 25 percent. I would not worry about benching João Pedro in this game. This is just analytical way of thinking about things. Of course, you layer on to this things that you think that the market hasn't picked up. Maybe these odds for Newcastle will shift between now and Friday. I'll be watching that very closely. But I'm just trying to say this is like an unbiased friend. An unbiased friend telling you that is, is Watkins to Isak, uh, Isak to Watkins that important if their, their expected goals are almost the same. Now, that friend is also telling me, unbiased friend is also telling me that the clean sheet odds are all poor. So if, you're, if your defense looks not the best this week, the best odds for clean sheet are 42%. That's Arsenal home to Brighton. Even that feels, Brighton look good. Um, so that feels like, okay, Arsenal are amazing. Okay, maybe they keep a clean sheet. But after that, it's not looking great. So if, you're, if your defender is a way to... Like I used Poro as an example, away to Newcastle. Fair enough. It's fine. Uh, so you have to really balance out who you want to play within that. And I think this week, for example, Brentford is good. Aston Villa is good to play if you have those defenders. I think Fulham, if you have the attacking defender like Robinson, he's good to play. I think Trent is fine, but don't expect, you know, 24% clean sheet odds aren't amazing. So you go with what you have. Basically, if your defense looks rubbish and your goalkeeper looks rubbish, everyone's does. So, coming to my team selection, I will um, read it out. It's uh, Henderson in goal. Uh, I've got Konza, Trent, and Robinson uh, in defense. I've got Jota, Salah, Gordon, Smithrow, and Rogers uh, in midfield. So, five in midfield for the first time. Um, and then Haaland, Captain, and Isak uh, as my forward. I've fixed my bench, unlike the last video. Um, so, I've got João Pedro on the bench, Luis Hall. Luis Hall started today for Newcastle. He looked okay. He didn't start very well again. So I'm going to wait and see. I wasn't going to play him over Robinson or Konza anyway, but I'll wait and see. He's my transfer out for Dunk next week. If um, if Newcastle look poor again and Hall doesn't start, for example, then he's a definite transfer out for Dunk. I might even do it early. So an early warning. Like if Hall is dropping, Dunk is just a no-brainer. Uh, and then Barco can, can enjoy the Spanish summer. So... Um, after looking at Rob T's graphics, so after actually, let me roll back. After watching the Newcastle game, I, I was panicking that what the hell am I doing with Gordon and Isak when it's the same money for Eze and Watkins? I can just use, I have two free transfers. I can use my two free transfers. Gordon to Eze is an upgrade in my mind. Isak to Watkins is an upgrade in my mind. But I've calmed down a little bit, um, as one does after thinking about it, after looking at Rob T's graphics, after looking at underlying data. And I just think that Spurs game could be anything. It could be anything from a Spurs win, a 2-0, 3-0 Spurs win where Newcastle completely crumble, or it could be a 3-1 Newcastle win where they look amazing again because it's a home game and they're back and they, ha you know, they haven't lost a player, unlike the Southampton game. So it could be anything. Uh, so happy to wait, and uh, I think that's what I'll end up doing. I think the one tempter for me is... Um, is if Rico Lewis is leaked to start. If he is leaked to start, then I might think about Hall to Rico Lewis. But I don't know. If he if he rises in price, I can't do it anyway. Um, so that's something that I thought about. I thought about Gordon to uh, to Bailey and Henderson to Raya. But then when I look at the next three for Raya, again, every video I'm sitting here saying Arsenal sh maybe don't keep a clean sheet and they keep a clean sheet. It's not hurt me much. Uh, but Raya looks really good. So that's been a little bit of a temptation, but I don't think I'll do it. But that's where my head is at. Um, these are all the options. The most likely scenario, as you all know me, uh, is going to be to roll. And for the first time ever, to have three free transfers next week. And it feels good, actually, to have three free transfers going into an international break where there might be an injury which swings prices. Like, I won't care about going early, right? If you have three free transfers, you just go early. Um, if there's two major injuries, you wildcard. And then you carry three free transfers into post wildcard as well. So I feel it's a good spot to go into the international break, carrying three free transfers. 
mostly because I've been lucky. I've been lucky that a lot of people have been going for João Pedro now, looking at his fixtures, Ipswich at home after the international break. A lot of people have been going for Rogers, Smith Rowe as the two top options for Nkunku. So I've gotten a little lucky with these enablers. So I feel like I shouldn't be spunking these free transfers um, and chill and then use my advantage if there's something that crops up over the international break. And if not, just carry on. Just carry on with the team if I'm happy with it. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I always forget, so I'm going to ask this time, if you don't mind liking the stream and if you like what the work we do, subscribe to the FPL Wire. And if you would like to join our Patreon, it's uh, patreon.com slash the FPL Wire. Thank you very much for tuning in and all the love you guys give me in the comments. I really, really appreciate it. I read every one of them and I'll try to reply to any of your questions as well. Thanks very much and good luck in Game Week 3.